Now, warthog is probably the species with the most character in South Africa. And it's because of this character and their availability that makes them such a sought after trophy for the bow hunter. And they're never too far from water, they have to drink at least once a day, and they often enjoy a mud bath. A warthog's eyesight is not as good as most antelope species, but never underestimate them. They are very aware of their surroundings, especially movement, but when it comes to hearing and smell, a warthog leads by a long shot. Especially when they're under a bit of hunting pressure, they have a smart way of running a circle around a feeding spot, tree stand or height, just to get downwind to smell if everything is safe before they come in. And when you stalk a warthog, wind direction is most important. Also the slightest sound will reveal your presence. And when they do detect you, they usually make a short grunt sound and that's the signal that the pig is taking off. Even in elevated blinds and tree stands, you're not guaranteed that a pig won't smell you. Sometimes when antelope species like kudu get your smell while you're sitting in a tree stand, they might run away and come back later on. But if a pig smelled you, it's all over. They won't come back. Warthog are known to be very tough, but with good shot placement, they can be hunted very successfully with lighter gear. It's very advisable as well to use a broadhead with a larger cutting diameter, since the warthog's got a smaller kill zone and they're known to jump the string quite a bit, so the larger cutting diameter will help you either with a bad release or string jump if the buck fever kicks in. So when you are at long last, ready to take the shot, got the peak fever under control, you got to be very careful and very sure exactly where to hit to make the perfect shot. Most accurate reference in the case of a broadside shot is straight up the front leg, one third from the bottom. You can also use the elbow as reference to be sure you stay in front of the elbow and about two inches up. This is not a bad shot, but the perfect shot would be quite a bit lower and a little bit forward. This big ball gives us a safe shot with his head over the edge of the water trough. It's also a less chance of a string jump. Note the peak at the back and the angle of the arrow in case of a pass through on your shot. In this case it happened and the pig in the back almost got hit. Also note that this is a broadside shot and the angle of the camera might be misleading compared to the angle of the arrow. The warthog on its knees gives opportunity for a safe shot. In this case, the shot was very high and too far back, and it's with these shots that those bullets with a larger cutting diameter will come in handy to do more damage regardless of the shot placement on this peak. In some cases, the position of an animal can be deceptive. For example, this peak with its front leg stretched far back and thus covering the vital area a bit. So the shot has to be further forward. Note that the shot doesn't look bad, but the arrow passed behind the vitals and makes this shot only marginal. When you hunt warthog out of elevated blinds and tree stands, you have to again be very sure about the proper shot placement. You will want to aim a bit higher because of the downward angle 
and for the arrow to exit lower on the other side. But it's much safer to hold the pin no higher than midway up because most hunters will find they shoot an inch or two higher out of a tree stand and you have to keep it safe in case of a string jump. Something advisable to do when you want to get some peace of mind if hunting out of a tree stand or elevated blind is to take a quick shot to a broaded butt or a portable field butt out of your stand just to make sure your bow is still on the money before you go for the long set. We would like to explain to you a couple of differences between Warthog boars and sows because the later it gets into the hunting season, August to September, the more pregnant the sows are and the less you would want to hunt them. The biggest differences between a boar and a sow is firstly body size. The boar is quite a bit bigger than the sow. The boar has got a bigger, wider head. He's got four prominent warts on the side of the face, two above and two below, and their tusks are usually wider and thicker than those of a sow. Only in breeding season, boars have these thick black tears underneath their eyes which gives them away easily. And then sows on the other hand are a bit smaller in body size. They've got smaller, narrower heads, only two facial warts on the upper part of their face, and their tusks are curled more and usually a bit thinner than those of a boar. On many occasions when scorching away shots are taken on pigs, the opposite shoulder gets hit, and that obviously prevents the arrow from a pass through which makes some hunters doubt in their setup and their equipment. But bow and arrow are never designed to break heavy bone, even though it's the case sometimes. But it's shot placement, that'll make all the difference. And you can be pleased by your arrow and broad its performance if you penetrate up to the opposite shoulder. The quartering away shot on Warthog is probably the safest shot to take and the opposite leg or opposite shoulder is a very good line of aim if the pig's only slightly quartering away. On a steeper quartering away angle, you should aim such that your arrow will exit between the front legs and remember to keep that pin always not higher than a third from the bottom of the chest. On many occasions we have a complete pass through on a pig. It'll take off and run as if nothing's wrong. But if the shot was on, it'll show some signs quickly after being hit. They're known for jumping up and down or go on a death run where they run blindly through bush and sometimes straight into trees. Because Warthog are such compact species, there's always a chance for a spine shot. Especially when you shoot at them quartering away angles, or when you walk and stalk and you have to take a shot a bit over 20 yards, and the pig jumps you a little bit. This next clip is an example of the interesting character of Warthog, and I doubt if an eland will be able to do the same move. Note how low the shot looks at first, but it's still a good hard shot and an example of how low you can hit a pig.
Now that concludes the part of War Talk on this DVD. We're going to take a short break and look at something a little bit bigger, the Eland, which we will discuss in a bit more detail on the next DVD.